football. All right. So we knew that Adam Thielen's contract was tweaked to help create some cap space for this year so they could bring in, you know, some of the guys they brought in, right? Uh, Jordan Hicks, Harrison Phillips, uh, Zadarius Smith. They needed to clear some space so they could sign some of these veteran players on defense. Well, multiple reports are coming out now about the structure of that contract. So it did save $5 million for this year's cap. But Adam Thielen now, going into age 33 in 2023, his cap number goes up from $17 million to almost $20 million in 2023. And it goes up from 18 million to almost 20 to 21 and a half million in 2024. Now, the 2023 money is largely guaranteed and dead cap. So, um, what does this mean? The Vikings continue to take money from this year's cap, shove it into future years to deal with it later or kick the can down the road. So, looking ahead to 2023, boys. The Vikings currently have $8 million in effective cap space for 2023. Now, there's obviously things they can do, but there's things that every team can do. And so where you start is is relevant here. So the Vikings have $8 million in effective cap space for 2023. The Bears have $100 million in effective cap space. You know, the, the Texans have $100 million. The Patriots have $75 million. The Seahawks, the Cardinals, $70, $75. Steelers, $60 million. Bengals, $60 million. So these teams are uh, in a great spot. Some of these with like the Bengals with a good roster and the Steelers with a good roster and cap space for next year. The Vikings are going to be in cap hell through 2023 based on the decisions they've made in the last month. Your thoughts? (sighs) (laughs) It better work. (laughs) Um, My thoughts, my thoughts. Once I stop seeing red, my thoughts are this. Uh, first of all, they are really going all in for 2022. Kind like of, they all, really are. Kind of all in. Well, they kind are really go in. right, but I mean, but I mean, from a from a what we would have done standpoint, they are because we we would have taken the hits in 2022 to start to clear the space in 23, and they're doing the reverse of that. In my opinion, they're putting huge pressure on. Kevin O'Connell in his first year when he should have the ability to sort of figure things out, right? Here's who I got. Here's who I like. Here's who I don't like. And, and I will give them the benefit of the doubt and say that there are times that you need to see guys play. I totally get that. Like film helps. But if you said, I need to run this back a little bit, but I need to see guys. But now there's an immediate pressure based on what they've done to their cap to really get results. It, I mean, it's clear that the people above crazy, I think, and, KOC have said we want to win and you should win and here's how and so they're like okay um the other thing that strikes me about this contract is unless I'm missing something here and again the cap can get confusing and contracts can be convoluted this is as un Rob Brzezinski like of contract extension as I've seen given their circumstances so I really don't like it um it confuses me, and I really think that somebody or somebody's plural in that organization are really misguided about what their expectations should be. So I'm disappointed in it. So on the Thielen contract for next year, his so his 2023 base of 18 of 11.8 million becomes fully guaranteed the third day of the 2023 league year. Now, if they decided after this season, hey, we're just, you know, you're 33, you know, injury prone, we're not going to we're not going to pay you 20 million dollars to the cap. 13 and a half of that is dead cap. So they would only really be saving like 6 million dollars by cutting I'm, him next year. So he's Correct. You know, he's uh I think 2024 becomes much more reasonable to to get out from that contract, but it's it's essentially and effectively a two-year deal for Adam Thielen here with some residual dead money beyond 2023. Correct. Based on, you know, the decision that you made here. Now, I will say things clear up quite a bit after 2023. Now, they're not in the best position. There's still like, you know, 15 teams that are in better positions cap-wise in 2 years from now. 
But you can get out from most of the Cousins deal after 2023. You can get out from most of the Thielen deal. By then, Kendricks will be off the books. Like, so you know, there's there's a lot more wiggle room. So it looks to me like they just said, let's let's live in cap hell for two more years and operate however we can and and push some money down the road, run it back, and then the new front office must, like I mean, Quasi must have gotten assurances that if you do it if you do it this way. You're like if it doesn't go well or we, or we come up short, you're not going to get fired. I mean, unless it's a total dumpster fire and they're you know winning two games somehow. That try this out for a couple years. Let's see if we can coach this thing up better than Mike Zimmer and company, and then we'll have a much more blank slate to work with. Maybe you even draft a quarterback in 2023, so that he can ride that. You know, he can sit for a half a season or a full season, and then cap space, new quarterback into 2024. You know, that's. That's my sense as to what's happening here. But you are we'll completely see if it pays you are completely in a way that you don't get closing your Super Bowl window opportunity or at least cutting it off because you are not going to win a championship. Like any realistic person. And now so so instead of instead of taking the cap hits in 22 starting to rebound in, tw- in 23 to crescendo, you are basically saying in in order to continue to hopefully be who we've been for a long time, which is we made the playoffs. Maybe we made the playoffs. You are cutting the ability out from under the GM and coach to build a championship contender quicker. Yes. I, th- I mean, I see what you're saying. I think – Here's if if they, but I think they're looking at it as a 2024 reset if this doesn't go well. And so if you start to think of it that way, like like the ship has sailed on any sort of like an expedited reset, like that's gone. They're not they're not doing right. That. They they closed that off already. Yep. So so the next so if things don't go well this year or next year, and by go well I mean if they don't like flirt with a championship, then the next reset window is 2024 based on what they've done with contracts here. And if you start to look at what the roster could, if they draft a quarterback in 2023, and I think there's half a chance they could trade back from 12 this year, get another first or second round pick for 2023, have some more ammo. Like there's things you can do to get more ammo for 2023. Right. Okay. What pieces will they have going into 2024? So they could have a quarterback that they draft that gets to sit for a year behind Kirk Cousins. They're going to have Justin Jefferson. Hope, I mean, ideally they sign him, even if it's $30 million a year, like you got to, you're going to have a rookie scale contract quarterback just like the Dolphins have with Tua, go get that big money wide receiver a contract. But the other good news here is, and I'm being optimistic Phil here, all right? Their offensive line is a bunch of dudes in their mid-20s and low-20s right now. So Christian Derrissaw will still be on a rookie-scale contract 24, 20, whatever, 25 years old in two years. Ezra Cleveland is going to be like 26 years old oh. in two years from now, or 25. Um, I don't know who your center is going to be. But Brian O'Neill will be 28, 27 in his prime. So your offensive line, now a couple of those guys are going to be coming up for contracts too, and Brian O'Neill's contract will kick in even more. Right. But you could look at this and say, if you whiff, you still have some really interesting pieces in your nucleus that you can, especially offensively, that you can build this thing around, and you'll have cap space. So, it's again, it's it's predicated on... It's predicated on them at some point looking more to the future okay. and not just keeping shoving money into 2024. If, if this doesn't work, do the non-football people get get out and quit bothering the football people? Because that's how this this feels like non-football people are like, we want to win. We need to win. And the football people, I'm going to assume they're smarter. Say, well, hold on a second here. Like what Ryan Poles is doing in Chicago short term is going to hurt like hell. But football wise, it's brilliant. It's the right move because it gives you the opportunity. Now, now, do they make the right moves after this? We'll see. But I guess my question is: it feels like the Wills and the non-football people with the Vikings have very much involved th- themselves. So if they're wrong, do do they get out and allow Quasi and Kevin O'Connell to do their thing starting, let's say, in 2024? Because I think as long as ownership is as involved as it appears to be right now. They are slowing the entire process. I would say, you know, my answer is going to be kind of, I think, I think ownership 
definitely wanted to make another run at this thing. And I think ownership loves Thielen and the community. And, like, Thielen's a fan favorite. I think they, they're really curious about – I mean, Mark Wilf even made some comments this week at the owners' meetings. Like, they're curious about giving Kirk a better infrastructure. Of course, why didn't you give him a better infrastructure four years right. ago or two years ago, right? Like, there's all those questions. Right. But my answer to this – really can't come until after I see 2022. Like, like I want I, at this point, they deserve a chance to let their vision play out in 2022. And if that vision comes to fruition, cool. Like I'll be the first one. You guys like totally wrong. Can't believe that this is <laughs> wow. Mike Zimmer really was that big of a cancer, but if they come up short or they sit in the median again and they're an 8, 9, 10 win team, even if they maybe win a playoff game, but they're nowhere really near the Rams or the Bucks or the best teams in the AFC, they have to draft a quarterback in 2023. So like my assessment of this is almost incomplete until like December through April a year from now. This has a this is starting to have a very Jerry Jones post Jimmy Johnson feel to it where the owners decide that they, they know what's best. They get yes men to execute that. And in defense of the yes men, they can only do so much. That's how this is starting. I, I hate the fact that this feels like people who, who were, um, who were absentee owners who lost track clearly of the franchise are now back to save the day. And, and again, I will go back to, the Zimmer blaming has gone way too far now. Like, this is clearly, uh, th this is all Mike's fault. This is all Mike's fault. And yes, Mike takes responsibility. He does. He was at fault. Um, but to say that is to not understand what we all saw because we lived here through the season and you really didn't. You followed along yeah. and lost track. It is a it is a pretty wild story to say, like, again, Mike Zimmer was not throwing his best fastball at the end of his Vikings run the last 100%. couple of years. The defense was not where it was before. Mike Zimmer definitely deserves a lot of blame, but it is a wild story to basically say, oh, he was so bad yeah. that we can we can and and again, I wonder what what is their goal? I mean, is their goal to win 9 games, 10 games or is like cuz your goal should be look at the best teams in the NFL. Tampa won 13, Green Bay won 13, the Rams won 12. Like, that's the goal. The goal isn't like another, let's eke out another win or two. You need to eke out, like, you won eight games last year, and you lost, a, like, okay, we'll give you the Greg Joseph miss kick. That gets you to nine. Maybe the Dalvin Cook fumble that shouldn't have been a fumble gets you to 10. 10 is not the goal. 12, 13, that's how you win a Super Bowl. So at this point, hey, I'm willing to let it play out, see what happens, and, and, and let them do it their way. Sorry, Dex. Uh, Mark Wilf even yesterday said, quote, winning the division is first and foremost our goal. From there, that's where you get into the dance and anything can happen. But and that's, that's where we want that's to be. Not, that's quote. not true. Not true. Getting into the dance football. and anything can happen is not true. That is mm -hmm. factually incorrect. Now, are there isolated examples of, oh, the Giants got into the dance and then right. they went on and won? Yeah, like, but if, right, you're, right. if you're going to build your blueprint off of outliers, like all these people yeah. that say, Hey, look at the Rams. The Rams had $45, $50 million in quarterback cap money tied up last year because of the Jared Goff contract. See? So they were literally the only team in free agency era history that has spent more than 13% of their cap on a, on a quarterback or two quarterbacks. And, like, we're going to use that as the blueprint. Like, that's – don't use outliers to build your blueprint. That's my problem. And the play-by-play -play of what these guys have, have been sold is so clear, and that's what bugs me. They've been sold. It was Mike's fault. Oh, okay, thanks. They've been sold. Kirk can be a lot better, which, you know what? In regular season games at times, perhaps he can. But playoff time, he's 34 years old, okay? And as Phil has continued to say, going back to his childhood, he's won nothing. So, like, Kirk can be a lot – Kirk can be Brady? Can Kirk be Brady? I don't think so. Um, the Wilfs have basically been sold a bill of goods by people – and have embraced that and believe that to think that that's going to get them to their goal. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think it's hard to say somebody needed to sit down and tell them the truth. And 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 I'll just I'll be optimistic Phil here again because I still think they're going to be competitive this year if if they can avoid a, a Ravens like in, a rash of injuries. So 
worst case scenario here, they're going to win eight games. You know, maybe they miss the playoffs or something, which would be which would be bad. And sitting in the middle ground of the draft again is not ideal. I, I get that. But worst case scenario for me is they're competitive this year. 2023 is sort of a, okay, which way should we go year? And then the salary cap sees open up for them in 2024 with yep. potentially a quarterback that you drafted in 23. So it's not – I don't think it's as doom and gloom as maybe you think it is. I don't like the direction at all. Like, like it's not doom and gloom. Again, I will be very clear. I personally don't care about 22. Like, I don't care. I'm personally – I, I'm curious about it, but I'm out as far as championship. Um, but I hate what I'm seeing as a trend here because my question becomes: When do you let the football people run the football team? That's that's where so. I'm what's the percent chance bothered. you think that the football people are running the football team? No, if they're smart, they're not. No, you know, I mean, like Ryan Poles took that Bears job and immediately started clearing everyone out, Phil, right? Ryan Phil, Pohl stripped the Bears down to the studs. We we have covered the, this team for how long? Are you telling me that Thielen contract that you just read is a true Brzezinski contract? It 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 feels like a deal with it later situation, more so than it feels like a deal contracts. with the devil because you were told make that work. Yeah. Do I think it's there's a good well chance that oh, it's not smart? And of all the players, smart. of all the players on that team, where ownership would say, "Hey." You guys have freedom to do what you want, except we're not trading Thielen because he's one of the three most popular players on the team. We want him to retire a Viking. And uh, and on, quite frankly, unless you can find an immediate upgrade over Kirk, maybe it's Deshaun Watson, who they did kick the tires on, but when it became evident that, like, oh, if we're going to really go down this path, it, it's going to be a whole public thing that then led to, like, Matt Ryan's departure in Atlanta and the Baker Mayfield fallout. Like, we don't want to deal with that. Right. I think I'm pretty sure ownership said, here's a list of guys that we want to run it back with. If you want to tweak, you know, you want to say goodbye to Michael Pierce, who gives a rip? But Harrison, Adam, Kirk, we're, we're, we're keeping that band together. Make the rest of it work. Well, when you say you're keeping that band together, I mean, that's like a huge chunk of your salary cap. And in order to give that band some more musicians to play with, you have to take their money and put it into future years. And that's I mean, that's what's happening. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and bitch about it every day. They've made their decision, and now they get to. Well, no, now the results. Got, the results will speak starting in September. Uh, I'm with you, but this. I'll contract, see you guys in September. Actually, this contract, bye, Phil. This contract <laughs> bothers me. This Thielen contract. I, I had no intention of complaining on t- today's show, but that contract bothers me. So, like, I was not. My intention was not to complain, um, but I just don't feel like the football people are being allowed to run the football team, and yeah. that. That annoys me because that that slows your growth. It's interesting. I want what's yeah. best for the kids. Okay. He uh, so his his cap hit for this year is eleven point six million dollars, which which it, it does bring him way down compared to Correct. some of the other top painters here. I mean, remember Tyree Kill has a thirty million dollar cap hit starting next year in two thousand twenty three. That's that's the new bar for yep. for wide receivers. Thielen's in two thousand twenty three as it sits right now is is about the thirteenth biggest wide receiver cap hit. So that's that's. Fairly reasonable for him, but where's the va- like? What I want to know is, where's the value on this roster? There's some Justin Jefferson, tons of value beyond what he's getting paid. It's like if you want to win a Super Bowl, you need value. You need guys overperforming their contracts, right? Yes. Joe Burrow, for instance. Yes. Matthew Stafford was a twenty million hit. He was not one of the highest paid quarterbacks last year. Darisaw could be. Darisaw could rookie be rookie contract, left tackle, premium position. Ezra Cleveland could be. Cam Bynum could be the other yep. safety spot. Maybe Cam Dantzler can be. But like that, that, it's you can't just have a bunch of dudes getting paid market value. Like you're going to run out of space and and you're going to run out of players. So and old injury prone dudes are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Very interesting. They've uh, they've committed. To, to salary cap hell the next two years to make a run at this thing, and then maybe they've got some assurances. But this is your daily therapy session if needed. It's daily Vikings entertainment. Let's also talk real quick about how to lose 40 pounds in a short amount of time like Judd did. That is a very simple 
formula and it begins with going to this website livia.com l-i-v-e-a.com because you, you'll get a response from my friends at livia weight control centers whereas phil Mackey just said i have lost approximately 40 pounds since september join today for summer get 25 percent off the program plus 35 meals for free that's right 25 percent off the program 35 meals for free you, you can uh you can go to their the facilities and Visit with their dietitians, or if you're outside the state, you're a Purple Daily fan in Arizona or Tennessee uh, or or New York. Consultations that can be done virtually. Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com, 855-GO-LIVIA, 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Check them out, and I'm going to tell you right now, in a few months, clothes all start to fit. You're feeling good. You're looking good. And if I can lose 40 pounds, I know that you can as well. Livia.com. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. Later.